While most of what you've seen so far in QSIS Level 1 training has dealt with adding audio hardware and routing audio components, don't forget that QSIS is a full-featured control engine as well. That means that it has all the power and features necessary to accomplish both small tasks like manipulating the behavior of native components within QSIS, as well as large tasks like facilitating complicated two-way communications with third-party devices. There are innumerable other devices in the world that can accept external control, from basic LEDs and contact closures, to projectors, shade relays, lighting controls, cinema masking, media players, really the sky's the limit. Essentially, if it's controllable, QSIS can control it, all without a separate control processor. Some devices may have non-native control plugins that have been designed for integration into the QSIS ecosystem, while others might be controlled through GPIO, serial ports, network communications, or more complicated Lua coding. However, we're not going to get into most of that in this QSIS Level 1 course. If you're interested in exploring the wide world of third-party control, we invite you to check out all of our control-specific courses after you complete Level 1 training. Instead, we're going to focus on the simpler end of control, the actions that almost every design requires. We'll look at the different ways to control the native QSIS components in the schematic beyond their basic functionality, as well as how to put control of your design into the hands of the end user. We'll start with snapshots, which are used to record the state of one or more controls so you can recall the state with a single action rather than readjusting every control manually. Then we'll take a look at how to customize the appearance and behavior of each individual control beyond its default properties in the control panel. Then we'll explore control pins, which allow you to connect controls together so that changing one control can have an effect on one or more other controls. Finally, we'll take a nice long dive into creating the User Control Interface, or UCI, which is the interactive visual control that your end users will actually use to interact with the system, whether that be from a native QSIS control panel installed in the venue or deployed remotely via a phone, PC, or tablet. Again, if you want to dig deeper into controlling third-party devices, or if you want to explore features like the block controller or QSIS scripting engine to write your own custom scripting to accomplish tasks beyond the basic controls that you'll learn in this section, be sure to check out our advanced control courses. But for now, let's take a quick break and come back to start our QSIS control overview.